me up. Cheap Beauty Products asks, what is your scariest experience? Probably the most scared I've been is just um, the things that my mind convinces itself of. Like the time I hallucinated people in my apartment and I saw the somebody stand in front of the light and I heard the footsteps and I heard the whispers and, uh, and, and there was no one. Um, and, and basically every night that I fall asleep, I do, I hear people breaking into my apartment and, and, and the footsteps and the, and all the sounds and the trying to get into my, my bedroom and, uh, and it's always no one. Um, it's just my a delightful side effect of my brain <laughs> being so fucking annoying. <laughs> These chocolates were sent to me in my P.O. box by some fucking sweet icons from Poland. Now, I'm going to be honest, the chocolates are covered in a somewhat concerning white film, um, obviously due to the iconic Homeward Bound-esque journey they had from Poland to Montreal. I would say there's a 25% chance that I could vomit at any moment, but, um, <clears throat> oh, that felt good. But I think it's obvious that um, I have a blatant disregard for my body and its well-being, so I will eat all of these. This looks like a, a crunchy little nut. Or it's not a nut. Bambi Blue, what is the name and life story of your iconic feather boa? Oh, it's so crumbly. The crumbles. Oh, uh, what was the question? Oh, my boa. It was over a year ago when an idea popped into my mind when I was with my mom. Mom! I said, what if, what if I added a boa to my outfits? Mom said nothing, but she knew I was on the verge of greatness. I Google searched peach boa, thinking there's no way it exists. What did I stumble upon? The majestic website of dreamangels.net. Dreamangels.net is the love of my life. I ordered my first boa, and as soon as it arrived, my world was forever changed. I ordered a second boa. I ordered a third boa. How many boas do I have now? Many. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Nothing feels better than when you're sad and at home and alone and sobbing than to put on multiple feather boas at one time. Look at yourself in the mirror, throw yourself a multitude of winks and just know that even though you're sad, that even though there are tears falling into the feathers right now, you are without a doubt the most iconic thing in a 10 block radius. Nothing compares to that feeling. No drug, no drink, no compliment can ever compare to the feeling of wearing four boas at one time. Okay, I'm actually crying. You know when you don't realize how much you love something until you say it out loud? You probably can't hear it, but my body is making some sounds. It is screaming. My body is screaming. Why? Why do you do this to me? <laughs> it's delicious, body. And it was a, the sweetest gift I've ever received. So yes, you're gonna swallow it all. And are you gonna suffer severe consequences? Highly likely due to the way that you're screaming right now. But, but listen up, body. Some sweet queens sent you some fucking treats from fucking Poland. So you're gonna digest this shit, okay? You don't have a choice. It's up to you how you decide to expel it and in what form. But we're gonna taste this shit and we're gonna swallow this shit because it's the sweetest thing you've ever gotten in your life and it deserves to be swallowed. Mm. 
this one half tastes like vomit mm. and half tastes like Kardashian vagina. May Kaplan asks, I would love to hear your thoughts on the inner child and um, how, how to release it. Mm. I don't even know, man. I don't know. I think uh, you just got to play. You just got to not take shit too seriously. And you just got to be weird. And I don't know. You just got to do it. You just got to do what you want. I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm doing. I do know that the percentage of likelihood that I'm going to vomit has risen to 45%. But we're going to keep on going. Babby Abby asks, if you could say something to your 16-year-old self, what would it be? I would say, uh, being skinny isn't the only way to give yourself value. But then again, me completely indulging in that concept is what led me to, to giving up on it. So, um, I'd probably say nothing and just try to fuck myself. Lucky Solar asks, when my dad died, did I experience a feeling of everything being different, like a new reality, like everything that was normal is now foreign. And do I think it's good to embrace a new normal and happiness and let go of the past? Or is it better to search through your roots and your old life to find happiness? Yeah, when my dad died, everything, everything was different. That was my first real experience of grief. And, and I think it's a universal thing that anyone's first experience with grief, whether it's um, a death or the death of a relationship or moving or, or whatever it is. I think everyone's first experience with grief that really shakes them. Because I've experienced other shit before, but, it, but nothing, this is the first time something just fucked me up. And everything felt different. And I got really, and I got really depressed because of it. But that... I'm so endlessly grateful for that period, for that time, and even for the death. I don't want, I didn't want my dad to die, but it woke me the fuck up. It woke me up, and at first waking up was painful, and it was sad, and I didn't want to be awake. I didn't want to, but I was, and I had to make changes, and I did, and, and, and through the changes, I, I, I don't even, I don't even know, I don't even, I don't even know how to explain it. But I got in touch with something that I wasn't in touch with before. Whether it's myself, whether it's a higher power, maybe, maybe it's both. Intention, intuition, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I could list off hippie words for another 45 minutes. I don't know. I don't know. But I woke up and everything that was so comfortable before suddenly wasn't. And I wasn't okay just being comfortable anymore. And that led me to a place where I, I was able to, to see the life that I feel I'm supposed to live. That I saw when I was a little kid. Everything changed after my dad died. And I did try to go back. Go back to my old life. Go back to my old comforts. But it just wasn't, just wasn't the same anymore. I, I wasn't the same anymore. The person that I became when, after my dad died couldn't go back to hiding anymore. I don't know if I can tell somebody else what's gonna work for them. I, I, I know I can't tell somebody else what's gonna work for them. I, I just know that experiencing the pain of grief propelled me to becoming the person I quietly always wanted to be. And I'm not, I'm not at all fully realized. And I, I, I don't know if you ever can be, but I'm fucking proud of myself. And I don't know if I could say that before. <sighs> Fuck! <laughs> God damn it! Oh, you gotta love a sob. <laughs> IMB Fleazy asked, um, how do I deal with thoughts about the future and the unknown? Um, they also said a lot of other really sweet shit, but uh, I can't, I, I'm not going to be able to say that out loud because I've already uncontrollably sobbed 
I think one solid sob per video is a good ratio. How do I deal with thoughts about the future? I don't know. You know what? The unknown is almost always going to bring up fear. You just don't indulge in fear. I mean, it's impossible to avoid, but you got to just try to connect with the quiet part of you that doesn't feel fear. The quiet part that has an inherent knowing because that part of you is the most real part. I don't think the part of you that feels fear is as authentic as the part of you that just silently knows that everything is always going to be okay. I barely know what I'm talking about at this point, but I'm also like feeling it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but like, I think I like it. <laughs> oh, this chocolate is putting me in such a good mood. Like I'm going to throw up, but it's worth it. <coughs> Sasha Nine um, said a lot of really sweet things, but once again, we're going to sideswipe the sob. Um, she asked, what do I think about kids in this generation using YouTube personalities as, as supplemental friends? I don't know. I, th I, think it's, I think it's cool. I mean, I'm going to think it's cool because I fucking do it. Let me tell you. The amount of times that I've watched the STD vlog playlist is, uh, is in the extremely pathetic range at this point. If you don't know what I'm talking about, STD is Shane Dawson, Drew Monson, and Trisha Paytas. And there's a playlist of 120 videos of them, it was just like really boring vlogs of them eating egg rolls. I will uh, bust through that entire playlist at least once a month, and it feels like I'm hanging out with my pals. Is it pathetic? 100%. Is it cozy? 1000%. I've, I've always really liked reality TV, and what I like about reality TV is that you see authentic, uncensored people that you just get to know. And YouTube is an even better version of that. It's just, it's just cool to be able to, to get to know these people. And I think also for me, a person who's really afraid of being genuinely vulnerable, it's a safe way of connecting with people. You can get to know someone really well. I mean, it's never going to be the same as knowing somebody in person. But seemingly, you get to know a person really well. And you can choose when to see them and when you don't want to see them. I'm sure there's arguments to be made of why it's super fucking unhealthy and not chill. But I don't know, man, that STD playlist is so fucking cozy to me. And when I watch those boring ass vlogs of them eating cupcake jars and feeling nauseous, I feel like I'm not lonely. Is that pathetic? Yeah. Do I care? Nah. Courtney Amber 86 asks, what celebrities do you hate slash can't stand and why? I don't really like disliking people. And I think anytime you really dislike someone, it's just, it's just because for whatever reason, they remind you of something you don't like in yourself. Um, but I, I'm going to be honest, Justin Timberlake kind of annoys me. I'm sure he's a cool guy, but the picture of him when he got married to Jessica Biel, where she's sitting there in a, in a beautiful pink dress on the cover of People magazine, holding her little hands, and he's jumping over her, be like, Whoa! Okay, but once again, the reason why that annoys me is because he's obviously a monstrous attention whore, which just reminds me of what a monstrous attention whore I am. So it's not about Justin Timberlake at all. I'm sure he's a great guy and I actually like him. What I really don't like is myself. <laughs> That's why I fucking love myself. Um, who else? Shy Lane Woodley. Not a fan about how she goes on and on about how she forages her own mushrooms and eats dandelion roots. But, uh... Once again, that's just me. I, I, I don't, I'm afraid of being, uh, being uh, thought of as a hippie. Um, for some reason, that makes me insecure. So she's so open about it and just about well, what she likes. And that's just kind of hippie-ish. And that's fucking cool for her. It's just, it's all about me. It's always about me. <laughs> but also, mm -hmm. <laughs> the chocolates have made me crazy. I'm losing my mind. And it feels so good. I feel so right. I feel very content right now. I'm in a fucking good mood. I'm very hyper. I don't know why. I feel like I'm going to throw up, but I'm into it. 